Social Security. When is the right time to take it? Why should you take it? This is a very polarizing issue for a lot of people because some people be limping along until they can start taking that money. But is that the right time to do it? We're going to discuss and I'm going to let you guys hear a clip from the financial person who changed my life, who got me saving money, who got me investing, who helped me in real estate. It's my glad guy, Clark Howard. Take a look. Are you confused about when to take Social Security? I'm Clark Howard. I want you to know the best time for you. There's not a perfect answer, but there are tools you can use to get to the best date for your situation. Most people tend to take it very young, relatively speaking. Your window to decide is between age 62 and age 70. Fidelity Investments has a very easy to use tool that shows you what happens with your money depending on when you decide to take it. It shows that living into my 90s, if I take Social Security, in the example I put in at age 62, I got roughly 1,500 a month. At age 66, I got 2,100 a month. But if I wait till age 70, I get just under $2,700 a month. Ladies and gentlemen, that is always the quagmire for most people. When should they take it? Mm. The longer you wait, you can almost make eight times what you would make if you take it with the minute you turn 62. But the issue for some people is they don't feel like they might not live that long. So yeah. that's when it kind of comes to which one do you want? Do you want to get it early because you fear you might die before you reach 65 or 70? Or do you wait because you're in good health? But the numbers don't lie. You can make up to almost six times what you would get if you wait until you 70 to get it. I give this one to you, Larry, first. Smart to wait or get it the minute you turn 62? Get it the minute you turn 62 if you're a black man. Oh, and, God, I knew you were going to say that. I mean, that's I just it. what it is. I mean, in, in reality, the, the, the life expectancy of black men in this country is considerably less than white men and white women. And so if we wait until we're 72, we may not, first of all, we may not live that long. And if we do live to get to it where we can get the increased amount, well, what happens? We wait that long, we get the increased amount, and then we're only alive for maybe, you know, another three or four years or something. And we so we get that other increased amount for three or four years. Well, if you take that money early, you're now you're talking about getting a less amount of money, but you're getting a lesser amount of money for like a full 10 years. So now let me give you this you caveat. Let me give you this caveat. Now you do know if you get your social security and you think you're going to be working a side hustle, it better be an under the table side hustle because you can be penalized from your social security if you make too much money. Yes, you can. But it but but if you take that money, if let's say that let's say that you retire from your job and you have a pension coming in or you have money from your from your Roth IRA or your whatever other investments you have well you could take that you could take your social security and just invest it that's that can just be the money you throw into your brokerage account every month and you invest it or that's the money you use to put into a little fund to go buy you know some rehab property or something mm. yeah I just I mean I, I really honestly think that if you are a black man in this country where you are, where you have a, a lowered life expectancy in the first place, it just makes more sense to take it early. You can use that money during that course. So let's say if you take it at 70, 62 instead of 72, for that period of time, you may be getting less money. It may not even average out, it, but it may average out. If you look at it at taking it over at 62, and let's say you live to 82, well, you're going to take that lesser amount over a period of 20 years versus a period of 10 years. So it may actually average out. It may act, you may actually end up coming ahead a little bit depending on what you do with your money. If you put it in, like I said, into a brokerage account and invest it, or you use it to, to maybe buy property or rehab some, I mean, maybe you just use it to, to travel or have fun with, but that gives you that much more time that you have some money to use and spend and play with. And let's say that you die at 68. Let's say you die at 71. Well, guess what? You've had that, all that money for that period of time instead of waiting for something that you may never end up getting because you just don't live that long to get it. So I say take it. I mean, yeah, maybe maybe you could have gotten more money later, but I mean, maybe ultimately it doesn't matter.
T Strange, drop your knowledge. Should you take that money mm -hmm. early or should you wait and let it triple itself by the time you're 72? Ooh, man, that, that is that's 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 a tough one, man. I, because I think I think that it would be different for different people depending on a few uh, few variables. One, what is the state of your current health at the time at mm -hmm. the time of 62? Uh, and then then two, what is the state of your work ethic? All right, and and let me explain that. Um, <clears throat> me myself. I'm a worker. I I have I have to mingle with something. As long as I am physically able to move my hands, my feet, I have to to do something. This uh, you know, I, I have to work. If I'm not, you know, if I'm not remodeling a home or building something, I'm doing I'm doing something. Uh, I have to, all right? Uh, you know, I've I've known people um one being one being my mentor uh i used to lay bricks and blocks and one of the guys that that taught me uh when he he worked you know he worked till he got older and then when he retired he was only retired you know for a few months and and then he just passed away of, of natural causes but he always you know be prior to retiring he would always say man i don't you know i don't want to retire I, I would go nuts if i just you know sit at home and just did did nothing or just watch tv or you know do what we're doing right now every day so i, I think a few i think a few variables uh do come into play if you you know if you are physically able to you know to go on you know i would say you know go ahead what you know what would you lose if you have if you have paid your due and you have done well with your finances and you can take, you know, you can take that break and then truly live the, 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 the glorified part of the American dream, then go ahead and, and take it as soon as, you know, as soon as you're, you're able, uh, the, that some people, you know, they make so many bad decisions that they don't start getting it right to they're in their 40s and 50s. So when retirement time come, all they have is, you know, ten or twenty thousand dollars in the bank or something like that. And you know, I, it's a lot of money for some, but ten or twenty thousand dollars really isn't a lot of money. And you know, if that's what you are have at your door to greet you when it's time to retire, <clears throat> plus an additional $1,000 a month or whatever they give you, you know, you have to, you know, you have to evaluate that to say, well, damn, is this, you know, is this what it's going to be like? Because when I was 40, when I was 40 and I was bringing $4,000 a month home and had 5,000 in the bank, you know, paying my bills, eating and doing things, you know, it was still a little bit of a struggle. But now I'm up in age. I've got 20 in the bank, but I'm only going to be getting $1,100 a month. All right. So, you know, so I think there's going to be a few variables that's going to have to play a part on whether or not uh, you, sh you know, you should or whether you can or not. If, if you've done well with managing your finances, saving, investing, and all this other kind of stuff, and you can do it, and you can hit 62, and you can say, screw the system. It's time for me to live my life. I'm not punching nobody's clock ever again. I'm about to do this, then go ahead. But we also have to look at the direction our world is going in. Almost every place you go into now, even McDonald's, you see folks 60 and 70 in McDonald's now. Uh, you see people 60 and 70 greeting you when you walk into Kroger's or Walmart. And so that lets that lets us know that when you're at, when you are legally able to do so, you're not always in the best financial position to do so. And, you know, it could be a conundrum for some, but, you know, that's the reality of the fact. So if you are if you are in your 20s, your 30s and your 40s. All right. And you know that 62 is coming right over the hill. Not too is not is not far away. You know, it's not far away. Then 
If you haven't started making preparations for that time, then I suggest that it's high time to start doing so like immediately, even in the midst of this situation that we have going on right now. Because when 62 hit and you have that choice in front of you, you don't want to have be put in a position to say, I can retire, but I can't because I won't be able to afford it. You know, uh, so, you know, if you did good by your kids and you raise your kids right and they, you know, they getting it and they able to assist, then, you know, that's that's all the more power. That's all the more power to you. But I, I would really suggest that that when it's time for that time to come, that you really put some some thought into it because you can take it and make things harder for yourself, you know. Uh, so with me, it just, it really just depends. It depends on a couple of variables. I think, you know, I think that's another reason too, like you were saying, some people don't have a whole lot of savings and then, you know, cause there are a lot of people that are living check to check and they don't, they don't make much income to begin with. And then they get a little bit from social security, a thousand dollars or $1,500 or what, whatever, every month from social security, if they go early. That's another reason why a lot of people are leaving the country in retirement. A lot of people are finding themselves down into South America and Central America. You know, I'm from I'm originally from California. A lot of people would retire and move down to Mexico because you can make your dollar go a lot farther than you can here. You know, you can go buy a, or rent a nice little villa near the beach and pay, you know, a thousand bucks a month for, you know, for a three bedroom place near the beach and you're comfortable or you can go buy a you can go buy a place you know in, in a gated community out there for like two hundred thousand dollars whereas you couldn't buy jack in, in anywhere near water out here unless it was in a swamp you know you, so, you know something a lot of retirees do that people don't know and i'm wondering what they're doing now a, a lot of retirees don't want to deal with cars they don't want to deal with living in the inner city a lot of retirees and this was about to be a problem for this industry believe it or not they will go live on cruise ships because it's cheaper to live on the cruise ship right. hopping cruise ship than it is to live on land because right. the cruise ship has medical doctors they've got all the food you could want sweet rooms you get to travel all the time you yep. got gym they live on the cruise and when I saw the last average three years ago, it said that a couple living on cruises was only spending $1,500 a month total. And that included everything for a couple. Oh, that's see, I'm, about incredible. <laughs> I'm about to pay yeah, my man. Man, That's pretty I'm incredible. Like, <laughs> and it, it, it was getting so bad that the cruise industry was trying to consider a way to do something about it. But when they counted the bottom line, they realized, okay, these people are helping us maintain um, our revenue stream. So they didn't really do anything, you know? Right. So I don't know. But for me, my thing that I always like to tell people, your health is your wealth. And this is coming from someone who used to be 320 some pounds and I'm down like 210 now. Your health is your wealth. If you can somehow or another Get control of your health before the doctors have to start controlling your health. Mm -hmm. I would say maybe push your retirement in terms of when you take that money, maybe in the middle, maybe like 65 or 66, if you can do that. To what Larry was saying, a lot of people are living paycheck to paycheck and they're barely making above minimum wage. So to go and get the $1,200 a month and don't got to do nothing for it, you're going to be getting health care. You're going to be getting that $1,200 a month. Then you can go live in subsidized housing. Then you can go get subsidized cell phone. I'm not going to be working for somebody flipping burgers and I'm not making minimum wage for what? For, I'm be on my own dime. But for the average person, like Tricia C was saying, some people retire and they don't have anything to do. Their mind just deteriorates and then their body follows right behind them. Just like that. So yeah. if it's me... I'm going to try to stay active, push mine as far as I can. In a, in a perfect world, I would push it to 72. But considering all the dynamics, I would probably try to take it somewhere around 67 to 66. If it looks like my health is holding up 
And if it looks like my dividends from all my savings are doing well, I would try to push it to that point. Now think think about it like this, right? Here's here's another reason why you could take your money early. And this is just this is just me throwing this out there. Let's say that you don't really need that social security money. Let's say that you have your retirement from, you know, you you've made sure that you've invested in your in your in your IRA and your Roth and your TSP and all the other, you know, investment, you know, vehicles that have been afforded to you and you and and you have enough that you can pay all your bills and, and live comfortably without your social security. So let's say you decide I'm going to take it early. I'm going to take it at my at my earliest opportunity. And so you only get say 1200 bucks a month. Well, 1200 bucks a month over the course of of 12 months is like 1400 and like 400 bucks or something like that. It's like 14,400 bucks. So that's so so it's $144,000 over 10 years. So now let's let's assume that your kids have kids and let's say that you know you you retire when your kids are say when your grandkids are like 8. Well, in 10 years by the time they're ready to go to college, that if you took that if you took that social security money you didn't need and just put it away in a college fund, you have $144,000 not including the interest that it would have generated that you can give to your grandkids to go to college. I mean, that's a huge benefit. I mean, or you could wait later and then take it out later and maybe you get a little bit more for yourself later, but if you don't really need that money anyways, why not take it out and use it and grow it? 